I think it's called repaint. Uh, so we can't style so, for um, the whole page. So it's really, really uh, it's a big performance hit. And the way I fix this, uh, I can't remember. Um, there's something interesting. Um, <laughs> So it's something to do with like the opacity and like having these elements there all the time. I think what I was doing was sort of doing some sort of waypoints when it came in, this element then appeared over the top of the other one. I think the way to get around it was using like translate Z and fixed positioning them and having them so that they were always there. And then basically just one of them went away and then the next one came in. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> um, here's a little video on doing what I just talked about then. And something else to be aware of as well. Uh, so in the Chrome DevTools there as well, I'm on the Timeline tab, but I've also pressed Escape. And in Escape, you've got these extra tabs here. And you've got a rendering tab. In the rendering tab, you've got these extra little goodies that are here. Um, so you're showing the paper rectangles, uh, the borders. You can get like a little meat that shows you the actual FPS, uh, that sort of thing. <coughs> But you do have to be careful when using it, which I highlight here. So you can see as I'm scrolling, it's gathering the information. Now, this animation is continuously going on. So the scroll, oh, so the frames is continuously you know, getting data, so it's continuously updating. Now I'm just clicking these extra little goodies down here to sort of help me out to figure out you know, what's going on. But you'll notice now like, you've got a massive spike here. So you need to be careful because enabling these is really cool and I'll highlight extra things for you, but it's also going to affect the timeline. So you have to work on something so that it won't do that, but just to be careful, you know, if you're running all these things and you're looking down your site thinking, oh my god, it's terrible. Oh. Um, just be aware of that. Um, another thing that uh, Paul Irish helped me with as well, I first had a look at the site. Um, uh, it's a bit of a work in progress at the time, but I had um, uh, a lot of things going on on the initial page load. So like things like automatic sliders and some of the animations. And one of the things that helped me out and pointed me to is that, um, as I mentioned, when the, um, the map was in view of all the animations, you can see that it's collecting data, frames. So he showed me, I'll just highlight to the fact that uh, when you first Initial, do the initial page load and just hit the car, there's loads of activity. So if you're not seeing anything in the viewport and you've got loads of activity, then it's probably not a good thing. So uh, uh, I was able to debug and find out what was going on. And it's just because I had like all these slideshows going on, so it was kind of all these different things that basically didn't need to be the end of the viewport. It's one of the things that I sort of did with the, view, uh, the waypoints. So uh, the SVGs and the animations probably happen when it's a lot more fun. So it's, it's almost like you know gamification. This you know it's like an end of body bat uh, battle, something like that. Boss battle. It's like we'll get us down to sixty frames per second. The little one, case prefer performance or just per. Uh, you can unlike these little um, bits of. JavaScript or jQuery in there, and it will show you uh, like what's the most performing. So here, I'm simply just adding like an extra uh, dot find in there, and I'm finding that so because I have to keep constantly like, looking through the file, and little things like that as well can help. Um, page speed test. Um, this is again I've got the link there. Page speed insights. So this is actually uh, running on an older staging server that you have, and this is running on uh, AWS with a bit of like GZIP and like some uh, compression enabled. And from this, you can see there's quite a, quite a big difference. Just one uh, new thing on the page speed. Yeah. You know, there's actual measurements of the move of all the things in frames and gaps. It seems to count them absolutely. So, if, for instance, I don't know, you had a thousand and um, yeah, I'll count the thousand things, but you also have like 999 and things like that. Yeah, that still counts as a good thing. So, when you're doing like really high end performance, yeah. If you need one in your head, yeah. it will always count as a minus 15. So you are getting behind that from people at really high school. Yeah. Be prepared for some <laughs> head Yeah. 
as well. What one to watch out for then? Yeah, I think with a lot of these tools as well, you know, taking the things to solve. You know, because I, I could put up a, an index.html screen with no content in there, and it would give me a list of things really quick. You know, have a hundred points. And, you know, obviously, it's no good to anyone with content in there. Um, Adios Smarny wrote a really nice blog article about um, images. Like, images are really, really, really big, especially like if you're doing like uh, retina devices that you have to cater for and you're using like JPEG images. You can soon add up to be really, really big. There's a lot of tools you can use, like image opt-in. Uh, to sort of get those file sizes down, Photoshop, you save the web, that sort of thing. And also, uh, if you're using Grunt as well, and both these uh, build tools can just manage all of that image also, uh, optimization automatically as well, which is really nice. And a server performance, so here I'm on uh, the web page test.org, and just looking at like certain, certain things that you can improve here. So, um, again, I think, yeah, this is showing from um, the uh, app version to the disk version. So another thing that I did with mine is that I've got two versions of the site. My application version is like everything that I need as a developer. It's got all the comments, it's got in why I've done various different things, links to other things to remind me of why I did certain things. Um, all of like the power stuff in there and this, that, and the other. But um, in production, I don't need that. And I, can, I want to minify it and get everything as uh, small as it can possibly go. So, this is the difference between the app version and the distribution version. And I basically do something in like my host's file and the host's file so I can run like app.mind.dev and disk.mind.dev. So I can do like comparison. And that's when I highlighted the, uh, the uh, previous uh, one uh, issue that was sort of making those uh, uh, circles like nest within themselves. So, it was really important that I did that because if I did just had the application version and just assumed that the distribution version was going to work. If I just sent that straight to live, then obviously it would have worked. Um, so, yeah, just to reiterate, this is the app version. So, this is my development version now, and that's running at 6.2 as initial page load. And the disk is 4.7, so that's saving apps. <laughs> Um, <laughs> right. Uh, uh, my colleague uh, Tom, yeah, uh, did some awesome stuff with AWS, and it means that uh, I can run this little command here. And when I'm happy with the disk version and I've checked it, I can run this little command. And, uh, is it a YAML file? So I post it. Yeah. YAML file that can tell it where to go and do all the Amazon stuff, and it just pushes it. So I can make a change. I won't be mad for that, but I'll <laughs> could just make a change live on the site now if I wanted to check it out. I'll do a front build task and just give this command and straight away it's live. Really nice. So it's hosted on Amazon. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, little thing uh, towards the bottom of the site, it's like sort of like finale saying thank you for visiting the site. Some social buttons on there as well. And this was one thing, I don't know if anyone else has come across this, but um, doing like Facebook button, uh, it took me some time because uh, I didn't realize, I don't I think this uh, bit isn't uh, viewable by default, or it doesn't sort of prompt you to put anything in here. Um, you think you add, I've always done this once, but I remember taking a screenshot because it was frustrating, but I think you have to add to platform and add it. You have your URL in that, and then it'll work. But because I've never done it before, it's not something I regularly do. It's just a bit confusing. Um, so yeah, basically, it means you get this. So you've got the you can define the uh, image and the text, and then someone can comment that and then share it to Facebook. Uh, this is something that's a bit cool. Um, crazy egg. So Crazy Egg is something that we use a camera creator, and it shows you where people have clicked. And it's really interesting, and this is really nice for me to see. It proves that people have scrolled down. People are viewing this website, taking information. Not only that, 
which is quite surprising to me. And people actually clicking these little things are quite small. And quite obviously see that the people are clicking them and they're continuing to read that content for me. Uh, another thing, this was the uh, Canvas JS donor element. Again, so this highlights the fact that people are clicking on that and you know the, uh, even though it doesn't necessarily say anywhere, you know, click this and it would do something, uh, people have clicked on it and they're getting a nice experience from that and that's nice to know. Uh, this is right down at the bottom of the website and the website's quite long. So this again is really nice to see. We've got some metrics that prove that there are thousands of people visiting the site. And people have scrolled all the way down, and you can see by the clicks as well, and the share and the projects as well. So, hopefully, they are active. Um, so, this makes me happy. So, I've finished the project, it's gone live, and this is really weird because I've worked this project just like on my little you know, tunnel box with my computer in front of me, and then suddenly it's, it's on the web. And anyone can view it, and that's just like, it still baffles me today. You know, other people are seeing this thing that I've done. Um, so when he went live, I had a few hundred shares there on Facebook and really nice comments. Uh, similarly on Twitter. It's just it makes it all worthwhile. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much.